Hi, I'm Chad with Move For Guitar. This lesson is from our series, Music Theory for Guitar. In this lesson, we're going to take a look at how to figure out the sharps and flats in each key. First off, download our free e-guide, Music Theory for Guitar. It contains everything that I'm talking about in this lesson, all the charts and diagrams, as well as much more, so it'll be really useful to you. And like I said, it's free, so there's no reason not to just go download that. But I am working on it right now as I'm filming this lesson, so it may not be available as you're watching this lesson. And if it's not available yet, it'll say coming soon. And if you'd like to get notified when it is available, you can sign up for our mailing list and we'll send you a notification for when it is available and let you download it. And also if you're signed up for our mailing list, you'll receive all updated versions as well. But don't worry, you don't need the e-guide to follow along with this lesson because all the charts and diagrams will be on the screen. And also we add at least one new lesson every day, so be sure to subscribe. This is part 15 in our series, Music Theory for a Guitar. If you'd like to go back and start at the beginning, you can click the link on the screen. So this is the last lesson before moving on to a new section. In that new section, we're going to talk about chords, chord scales, how to build chords, and much more. And everything in the new section is going to build off what we've been learning up to this point. But there's one more thing I want to cover before we move on to that because it's important to at least touch on it now. We'll dive deeper into it later, but like I said, I want to touch on it now because it'll be confusing later if I don't. And what I want to talk about in this lesson is how to figure out what sharps or flats are in each key. And this will be really important as you go along, not only for just understanding the major scale, but what we do in the next section as well when we start talking about chords and chord scales and all that. So like I said, we're not going to dive too deep into it in this lesson, but I want to give you a primer on it and at least give you a place where you can easily go and reference it if you ever have a question about it. So as you know by this point, to build a major scale, you already know how to do that. And really, if you just look at it, it's just taking any note and then putting them in order along the musical alphabet. For example, if I take an A note, all I do is go A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and then I'm back to A because the musical alphabet stops at G. So that's the order of my notes, just in the alphabetical order. But now I just have to find out where the sharps or flats lie in this key. And that's what we're going to talk about in this lesson. I know just through experience that C, F, and G have sharps, and that's where they lie in this key. But I'm going to explain how to actually figure that out for yourself. And you could just use the chart that I gave you from the last lesson and look it up, and that would be fine. But I think it's important to be able to figure this out for yourself, because eventually you're going to want to memorize it so that you can just automatically know as you're playing or as you're figuring something out because it's really important to be able to do fast when you get more advanced. And most teachers teach the circle of fists to teach this and I will dive into the circle of fists in a later lesson. I'm sure you've probably heard that term before if you've studied music theory at all because it's really common for understanding music theory. But I don't like teaching that very early on because I think it gets really confusing if you don't teach it in the proper context or if you teach it too soon. And the circle of fists has a lot more to it than what I'm going to show you in this lesson. So I just think it's better to show you the way I'm going to show you in this lesson and then later we'll dive into the circle of fists when there's actually some context to apply it to. So here's the chart that I gave you in the last lesson and it was just all of the keys written in the common way that you would see them. I left out all the enharmonic equivalents except for F sharp and G flat and that was because both of those had the same amount of sharps or flats. F sharp had six sharps, G flat had six flats. So that's why I have both of them here. You'll see either one of those. And with the other ones, for example, like D flat, we did D flat over C sharp even though C sharp is in, its in harmonic equivalent because D flat only has five flats and C sharp has seven sharps. So it's much easier to think about D flat than C sharp. So that's what we based all of these on and you'll remember that from last lesson. But now I want to go a different direction and reorder these so it's easier to visualize where the sharps are and where the flats are. Right now it's just in alphabetical order, but I want to order these differently. And what we're going to do, we're going to start with sharp keys. 
And a sharp key just means that the key has sharps in it. So some of the notes or just one of the notes has a sharp in it. It doesn't mean that the key has to start with a sharp like F sharp. It just means that one of the notes in the key has a sharp in it. For example, G has one F sharp in it, so that's a sharp key. Or E has one, two, three, four, so that's a sharp key as well. It doesn't have to start with a sharp, it just has sharps in some of the notes or one of the notes. So here's a new chart I want to look at. And we're going to start with the key of C major. And that's because C has no sharps or flats, which you should remember by now because I've mentioned it multiple times. So what we're doing with this chart is starting with C because it has no sharps. We're talking about sharp keys right now. So C has none. And then we're going to go through which one has one, which one has two, which one has three, and so on. So we're just going to start with zero and work our way up adding one sharp each time. So knowing that C has no sharps, the way we find the key that has the net one sharp, I mean obviously you can just see it on the chart, but I'm going to show you how we came up with this. So the way you do that is to go to the fifth of C, so one, two, three, four, five. G is the fifth of C. So that becomes our next key, which we start with, and that key now has one sharp in it and the place the sharp lands is on the last note of the key, which is F. We're not looking at this note because this is just an octave higher than what we started with. So we go from wherever we start, we're starting with C, so we go to the fifth of C, which is G. G becomes our new key with one sharp, and we add that sharp on the last note. Then we do it again from G, we go to the fifth of G, which is D. This becomes our next key, this has two sharps, and now we keep the last sharp that we had from G. So we always keep the sharps that we had in the key and then we add a sharp on the last note every time. So D has two sharps. F is a sharp because we had it in the last one with G, in the key of G. And C is a sharp because it's the last note of the D major scale, so we know that that's where we add the sharp. And then we can just go and do that through every single one. If we do one more, A is the fifth of D, that becomes our next one. A has three sharps. We keep the sharps from the last one, which was from the key of D, so that's a C sharp and an F sharp that we're keeping. And then we add a sharp on the last note of the key of A, a major scale and that's G. So now A has three sharps. So hopefully you can see how that works. Every one of these scales is in alphabetical order, which you should know that by now, just in the musical alphabet, so it stops at G. So you can see if I was to look at E, it's just E, F, G, A, B, C, D, E. That's just alphabetical order from E to G, and then it starts over back at A. But then I just find where the sharps are by starting from C with none, then I go to the fifth, which would be, be G. That becomes my key with one sharp. I add the sharp on the last note of that key. And then I keep doing that. And every time I go to the new key, I keep the sharp that I added and then add the new sharp on the last note. And we went up to F sharp right here. And F sharp has six sharps. So there's one note that doesn't have a sharp that we didn't add any to. If you wanted to have the key that had all the sharps, it would just be the same thing. We'd go to the fifth of F sharp, which is C sharp. So C sharp has a sharp on every single note. But C sharp is not a common key. That's not a common way to see it. That's why it's not written out, because you would look at D flat instead of C sharp. And just to point out again, you'll probably notice the only one that starts with the sharp is F sharp. All the rest of them don't start with sharps. So then we can do the same thing with the flat keys. It's just we have to use a different formula with the flat keys. But it's going to be the same concept. So again, we start with C because there's no flats. But this time, instead of going up to the fifth, we go up to the fourth, which is F. And then we use the same type of concept where F becomes our new key. F has one flat. But this time, instead of adding the flat on the last note, we add it on the fourth note. So it becomes B flat. So it's the same concept, it's just we start with the fourth, 
note of the key we're on to start our new key and then we put the flat on the fourth note. So it's actually a little easier to remember because of that. So again, F is just going in alphabetical order, but it starts over at G. So F, G starts over at A, A, B, C, D, E, F, and the flat's on the B. And you found that flat like I just showed you. And then you would do the same thing we did with the last one. Again, start on the fourth of F. That becomes your new one, which has two flats. Then you add the flat on the fourth note and now it has two flats because you always keep the flat from the last one. So you have B flat and E flat and you can just do that through all the keys and you would see that it works out. Except that I noticed that I forgot to add a flat right here on the C flat for the key of G flat. But I'll fix that for the E guide so don't worry about it. So again G flat is an inharmonic equivalent to F sharp that's why those were both in gray and the reason we have both of those is because they both only have the same amount of sharps or flats. G, ha G flat has six flats, F sharp has six sharps and again just like we did with the F sharp if we wanted to get the key that had all the flats we would do the same thing we would just go to C flat and C flat has a flat on all of them but C flat is not a common way at all to talk about a major scale because C flat is really just the note of B. B and C flat are the same and C flat is not even a note you would see on your fretboard. It's just if you went from C went down half a step technically that could be a C flat if it needed to be in that musical situation. And notice with the flats that F is the only one that doesn't start with a flat. All the other ones start with flats. B flat, E flat, A flat, D flat, G flat. F is the only natural note meaning it doesn't have a flat on it. So like I said, this is just a primer. We're going to dive deeper and deeper into this in future lessons. We'll dive into the circle of fists and all of that, but it's not important to memorize all of this yet. It just, I just wanted to touch on it because it'll be confusing if you don't have the basic concept down. But like I said, I'm going to show you how to actually memorize it later. For now, you can just use this e-guide as a reference if you need to actually look up where the sharps and flats are. And I just want to explain how I came up with this diagram, meaning we're starting with either in the sharp key or the flat keys, we're starting with no sharps or flats, then we're moving to the next one which has one, then the next one which has two, and so on. And that's how these diagrams are written out. And then I showed you the formula that was used to actually find them. But again, just download that e-guide as a reference for now, and you can move on to the next lesson where we're actually going to dive into chords and chord scales how to build chords and much more and really start diving into how to use this information to play music. So go ahead and move on and be sure to subscribe because we add at least one new lesson every day.